The crowned coward was about to abandon his spiritual journey. Handled, handled on the daily. Slapped down by the same hand over and over what a joke and over. Been. Come on, man! Each time he became more furious than the last. Curious were his efforts to kill himself, which were in vain, as he mysteriously respawned at the cave's entrance each time he met his. Stop working because I yelled. Okay, keep your cool. He was still trying to complete his journey, but he was fully aware he had basically zero chance. Which brings us all to the conclusion he didn't much care for his health or his life. And reaching the end meant the greatest of all glories. At least this was how the tale was told. It was a confusing situation for the king, as he was now on a 2D plane, limited to left and right and up and down, with an occasional angle mixed in. He was not much for fighting, but he figured if this nightmare of horrors which had him in the groundhog loop, he might as well attempt to properly see it through. And maybe, just maybe, on this 3000th attempt, he would break the spell and send these vile vermins to lands unknown. Perhaps he would find his queen and a large room of gold nuggets. Kill yourself, Gold Nugget. Come on, man! On a few of his previous attempts, the crowned coward had mistakenly come across etchings in the cave ceilings. Usually there were four, other times he would only notice three or even two. This was perhaps due to his sharp decline in vision as the result of his ex-queen pouring boiling hot water in his face after she discovered that he was having some extra fun on the side while she wasn't paying the best of attention. That might also explain a generally shoddy complexion and rapidly receding hairline, or well, at least to some degree. That, or just maybe it's due to the fact that he's nearly 58 and eye therapy was not quite at a premium based on predicted timeline and general era in question here probably still drinking potions and elixirs to heal wounds or increase strength and speed, while most of the time it would either set you on fire or poison you like a King Cobra would. I would guess that the rate's about 50-50 positive to negative during the alchemy years, especially in this game. Come on, man! God damn it, dude. God damn it, dude. All lies aside, it appears that the king was quickly gaining dank melee, ranged and magic damage as there was a visible roman numeral above his pixels that seemed to be quote unquote level being him up. From what I saw firsthand, he was reversing the aging process. Quicker swings, faster reactions, hell I swear I saw the dude's hair changing colors, like the one guy. King Cowardly was quick becoming a regular R.I.P. the game specialist. I would say I would have given up well before 3,000 deaths, and I wouldn't have stopped talking about it in the cave. I would have just solved a lot of pain whilst playing Groundhog with everybody else out there, especially the girls. Those, you can see the, they have the, it, there's a blood in their eyes look, and it, it, I got nothing. Oh, and before I forget, he also had uh, this crazy fixation on these glowing shrines. They were all peppered amongst the first two areas. He kept on babbling about RNG gods, like, Oh look, another immune to Spike's blessing. What are the odds? I had no idea what he was muttering half the time. The guy never got much credit for intelligence factor. It's mostly crazy to think a person with low intelligence ceilings like his would ever make it into a position of power. But maybe that's why we're here in this dusty cave in the first place. Throughout his fruitless adventure, I'd noticed the king had been keeping a journal 
So I did what the best scribes do and read upon his wares. He was halfway competent in most of his self-talk. You know, the properties of orcs, the best way to cheese them, his progressing tactic towards jumpers and even slimes. Though I personally have no issues with them because they kind of just like land on you. And it's slimy and whatnot, but it's not something I'd call gross or dangerous. They don't pose any immediate danger, you know? Akin to like a, a newborn fawn or a beam of balsa wood. For some reason, however, the coward had a real fear of them. There were echoes amongst some of the cave babes that told of different colored slimes. Ah, just a pigment change. King's bitch. Today, royalty impressed. The frail, aging man before me was something different. I still didn't have much faith and was prepared to flee his side at the sign of first trouble, but in 3,000 attempts, this was the second farthest along I'd seen him get progression-wise. But the last time, he tripped over a pebble, and his rusty sword violently spun out of his grasp during the violent fall and wiped out three vicious cave bats. He bragged later about it. I didn't say much. After all, maybe he could get me out of this mess sometime in the next 50 years. But let's get to the monstrosity. The one that maimed him into the sidewall just days prior. I was privy to the wide open space and door that would surely close behind us as I approached and accidentally got locked out of the main room watching. I was stunned at his progress. Quick and calculated lateral movement and decisions. The smoke cleared. The battle was done and the king stood over a mangled worm that had been felled by his rusty blade. Maybe he got lucky and gave the savage beast the rust poison. We still haven't found a proper word for that, despite the recent rust-related deaths in the kingdom before our trek into this shit cave hole. We would camp for the night. What lay ahead was unknown to the king and unknown as well to me. I would rather enjoy the silence and the predictably ominous foreshadowing for the caverns that lay ahead.